Hey guys, uh, welcome to the unveiling of Magnum. This is my bench. This is a, it's actually a Bodenman watchmaking bench. And Bodenman is a company in um, the Valley Jeu in Le Chenit. Well, the, Le Chenit is the zone. I think it's actually in Le Brasses. Um, but the, um, they make these really fancy watchmaking benches. So this one is, this was purchased used. Um, it belonged to Rolex and Rolex gives a lot of old watchmaking stuff away to the Salvation Army, or actually it's called the Protestant Center Social, Pro Social Protestant. Um, but anyway, it's a thrift store, giant thrift store located in Le Plan de Watt, which is like where all the big watchmaking companies are. So I bought this there for $250, the bench, and it it's basically you can do, you know, kind of traditional watchmaking with your arms resting like this and using a loop or, in my case, a binocular loop. And you can also use these kind of edge-mounted tools like the Jacko tool, and you can get in, get your chair adjusted so you're at the right height to actually look at this stuff. So I just was setting up the, this <clears throat> Jacko tool to, I've been, I, I have a smaller um, balance I want to actually polish, but I don't want to break it because it actually belongs to a watch. So this is a kind of dummy balance. And this burnisher is not exactly the right burnisher. It's it's all four corners are square. And the tip of it is Oh wait, is that actually trapezoidal? No. The the tip of it is also rectangular, which it's not supposed to be. For watchmaking it should be one edge should be slanted. And two corners should be rounded, and they should be rounded specifically so that when you're doing a balance wheel pivot like this, you don't square it, you don't you don't burnish it into being square. One thing that'd be interesting with this one, because it's just a test, would be to see if I if if I could square it if I wanted to. Oopsie. There's like no chance in hell I'm going to get that to loop back around there without everything falling off. But I'll try. That's when your skills with the Jacko tool are amazing. So I'm trying to burnish a flat corner. Oops, okay, there we go. I'm really interested to edit this footage because I have a lot to work with and of course, if you only have one camera, your fingers would be blocking it half the time. But if you have like five cameras, almost no matter what you do, you've got some kind of view of it that's helping the narrative. The only reason I wanted to get it back in there was to look at it. I don't know if I burnished that. See, this pivot's broken. It should extend pretty much into that slot. I have a feeling that to do this correctly, you also need some paste, like diamond paste or something to put in there. But um, 
I'm edit. I'm shooting this in a weird way, like thinking I'm going to edit it, and it's confusing to me because I don't. I can't think of how it's all going to fit together. Um, because the first time through, I didn't have the Jacko tool set up at the beginning. Maybe I'll cut to that and then cut back to this. Okay, so actually, this is the. This is the full experience. Ooh, that, why is that guy loose like that? It's winding. And that is setting. So you can see how that turns the... Those gears. Look at that jewel. Now, the thing is, if I was to... If I was to try to deal with this without using any... This is weird. Kind of caught between... There's not the proper sense of like mediation going on here in terms of I'm gonna try the binocular loop. Okay, the other thing is is that yeah, so where'd I put the tweezer? Um, okay, so if I'm in here like this. That's pretty fine. I think I'll get used to working that way. What else can we look at? I want to keep it short. That is freaking great. Okay, I'm going to go back on YouTube, so i got to watch my language. So I've been doing a lot of pivot breaking on these little balances, balance wheels, because broke both of those pivots, one of these pivots, because like you got to break it. If you're not breaking stuff, you're doing something wrong. Or something right. So I got one pivot left to break there. But the problem is, right now I can't even, with one pivot missing, there's not a lot I can do with that. Um, but the main thing about this is just like, this, this camera is cool too, because I can put it completely out of the way if the cable is managed correctly. But I can also... tilt it and aim it at operations like Jacko tool um So the whole reason for this bench is there's these kind of traditional watchmaker tools 
Jacko tool for polishing pivots, etc. And these tools are designed to be used on a bench like this, not under a microscope. Um, all I want to do here was just fiddle with this camera, actually. That's kind of cool. It's almost too close up. Oh, and then I can also move these other cameras. Right, so you got that. Okay, so now you can see how the Jaco tool works. Why is that not free to roll? There we go. That's cool. Now, I think I could do this under my microscope, but it's not the, the under the microscope isn't the right way to do it. Right way from a traditional watchmaking point of view. Now I could try to mess around with this even though it's got a broken pivot and that might not work out. I could try to put the broken pivot into the fitting. Now, does it help to look at the microscope? Yeah. So you can pretty much see what the deal is here. I think this is going to fall out as soon as I turn this. Yeah, because that's not registered correctly. Okay, so to register this, you got to go to where you got it in the grip and then push in, but that's exactly where you can break things because I think that ironically my camera system is better than like you can see more of what's happening than I can. So I want to I want to stick the broken pivot in into the fitting on this side. And then I want to advance those claws. See, they advance separately from the
Is that pivot also broken now, or is it... See, there's just like too much freaking torque on this thing. Too much torque and not enough pivot. I'm, I'm curious about, I actually made this handle because it, it was obvious that a handle like this is how this is used also. But then you lose a hand. So great, I could take a look. Okay, I can see the pivot in this. See, it's almost about to fall out of there. So you could trap it with the burnishing tool. But... This is all insane. It does not help, although this is also making excuses, it doesn't help that there's a no pivot on that thing. But the idea behind this is that Oh, this balance wheel is about three times bigger than the one I, I need to work on also. No. Nope. So I need the little spring puller. I don't feel like messing around with that bow. There's a little retractable thing like a keychain puller that you can use. Just getting the bow into position ruins everything. Plus the bow is right in my freaking face. Maybe I don't want that, those things around the wheel. Maybe I want them in, just free inside the wheel. So that when, after I've got things set up, it just does not help not having a pivot on there. Let's flip this around just for show. If there was a pivot on the other side, or if I was burnishing the other side, And I would stick this pivot in there. Now there's no, you know, that pivot is completely broken off. So it's just sitting on there, you know, but in theory you have a pivot sticking through here, laying in that slot. And the pivot is, the slot is the right size so that just the top of the pivot is exposed to the burnisher. And then the burnisher traps it, allows you to burnish and to provide energy with this. I stopped watching what I was doing. 
Oh, I see. I'm not getting a lot of... So that's pretty good, actually, considering there's no pivot on there. That's basically what you want to be able to do. And this is uh, how I can do it. That's cool. All right. Um, so that's introduction to Magnum. And um, there's a lot more I'm going to be able to do on here in terms of trying out these traditional watchmaking skills. Thanks for watching.